Uh, I bet you didn't expect the video so soon, huh? Well, I'm trying to make more videos. Anyways, right now the hot thing is po Pokemon Go, and it's actually brought up a subject that I don't know if I talked about before, but I've always wanted to. And it's kind of intertwined with the subject of creativity in Korea. Not creativity on an individual level. So that's like another thing. I think Koreans are like the most creative people in the world. The only problem is the hierarchical system kind of uh, suppresses that, eventually eliminates it over time. But anyways, uh, right now what I want to talk about is product creativity. And uh, we can't play Pokemon Go in Korea, unfortunately. Uh, a lot of us are pissed off and oh, I got a message anyways the only way we can play it is if we go to Sokcho which is near the Korean board near the North Korean border or you can go to North Korea and play Pokemon crazy huh but uh, I, I said something a few days ago or when Pokemon Go came out I said I bet uh, Pokemon Go will not come out first I bet you, there's gonna be something like Kakao Friends Go coming out first and I was wrong Kakao Friends didn't come out first actually Pororo Go is coming out first and for those of you who don't know is Pororo is like this little penguin it's like a little kid's uh, cartoon character and uh, yeah there's they're coming out with a Pororo Go game where kids can go capture Pororo and we won't know about Pokemon Go until August 20 something so of course I'm pissed off but it opened up the possibility for this video and uh, let's talk about products first because uh, there's this very interesting pattern that Korea follows is that whenever there's a new product and it gets released around the world it's usually the last place is Korea and there's a reason for that uh, because that way they get to rip it off first and then make some profit and then make it really hard for that product to come here so that when it does come here the Korean product already made its profits. Now, some people are gonna get pissed off at this, but take the iPhone for example. Back when they had the iPhone battles, I think it was specifically the Galaxy S2. Uh, Kore the Samsung tried to, and successfully had uh, the iPhone banned here for a good portion of its release. Uh, basically, patent infringement, you know, iPhone copied Samsung's design or whatever, which is a lot of bullshit. Anyways, the, the Galaxy was able to sell all its, as many phones as it wanted, and then after a long period of time, the phone was finally unbanned, after Samsung had already sold all the phones. So you see how this works, right? And then, even though the iPhone was released, it was really hard to get apps working on the iPhone to discourage people from buying the iPhone. And pretty much, for even for a long few years, it was really hard to get uh, apps working properly on the iPhone. Uh, things like PayPal, hard to use, uh, but I'll get into that right now. Um, Uber, that's another example. Uh, when Uber was first introduced, it was taking the world by storm. Guess what? Banned immediately in Korea, and guess what? Not even three weeks later, Kakao Taxi was formed. and. Yeah, basically, whenever something good happens that might make profit for someone else, banned in Korea, and then, look, miraculously, someone in Korea came up with a product very much like it, and then, okay, maybe we'll let them in after all the profits been made. That really sucks. Um, same thing happened with Pokemon Go. It pretty much happens predictably whenever something new comes out. Um, other examples, okay. Companies here have a lot of uh, political pressure, uh, especially when it comes to cutting into their profits. And domestic products in Korea are very high priced. You would think, oh, Samsung is made in Korea. I guess I'm using Samsung again. Uh, of course, I pro you probably get a really cheap Samsung TV here, right? Nope. You can probably get it cheaper in America. Do you know why? Because they make it really hard for Koreans to have uh, product choice. So basically, Koreans have, are forced to buy Samsung TVs at really, really jacked up prices because uh, the competition is not here. Well, it's here, but 
uh, Korean, well, the government, which is in favor of Korean companies, taxes the hell out of whatever foreign products they do allow into this country. So let's say uh, you want to buy a Sony TV. Maybe it's only cost $400, but they'll jack up the price so high that Koreans will have no choice but to buy the Samsung one, even though they're getting ripped off pretty badly. Now, Koreans came with a solution to this. Like the customer always prevails, or so, usually. So people started buying from abroad. They started buying, uh, you could probably get the same Samsung TV for like half the price in the States. So this, people started buying stuff abroad. Uh, especially Amazon became really, really popular. And the government, or actually the companies, they didn't like this. So what did they do? For quite a while, there was a ban on websites like Amazon.com. So they couldn't buy uh, Korea products from abroad for cheaper so they could be forced to pay the higher prices here and uh, I guess they ruled it was unconstitutional after some point but you get the point uh, basically they want they want to force people to buy the products here and because of what happened all these new pop-ups started happening where basically you uh, would buy a virtual American address so uh, an example is like Mateo. Mateo is very good if you don't if you if you're Korean but you want to buy products from abroad to save a lot more money but you don't have an American friend living abroad or you don't have an American address whatever. So you set up this virtual account on like Mateo.com. You buy your Adidas or whatever other American products you want to buy and they'll ship it to the Mateo warehouse to your like fuel box and then they will mail it to you. So that became like a huge business and like a lot of uh, Koreans were like just shopping abroad because you know, they don't want to get fucked over by the companies here. But again, the government had to ruin it. And now, and this really sucks, whenever you buy something from abroad, if it's over like a hundred bucks, you get, you get taxed quite a bit. I mean, I, I felt the pain. I try to keep my stuff under a hundred, but sometimes you just can't. And aside from the taxes, your pra your package is probably going to be stuck in customs for like two or three weeks. I mean, before it was just like boom, boom, taxes, customs in and out, ship to Korea really quick. Now they try to discourage you from buying from abroad by making you wait this like insanely unnecessary long time. But you know what? A lot of Koreans don't care. They rather save the hundred dollars, the five hundred dollars, or whatever, and just wait for the package because that's the way companies here work. So, um, that's my little semi rants and the politics of products. Uh, supplements, you might have noticed I said in my previous video were very, very expensive here, fucking expensive. But, iHerb is amazing. These costed less than 100 bucks, probably like 40 bucks, but you don't wanna know the prices here my creatine and my beta alanine. I ordered them last Tuesday and they came here today. So less than a week. Uh, they cost less than a hundred bucks and they ship from California. So that's one nice thing. Just try to keep your orders from abroad at a minimum and maybe you'll be all right. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm open to taking questions now. So I'm making Spanish videos about people asking me questions. I'm going to answer them. I want to do the same with my English viewers. So you guys send me your questions. I'll make videos about them. And yeah, that's about it. See you.